Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a premier field engineer for Microsoft. Today's video is going to cover renewing uh, issuing or subordinate CA certificate. In a previous video I posted, I went ahead and covered the steps involved in updating and renewing the uh, root CA certificate in a two-tier PKI hierarchy. Today I'm just going to go through and finish that whole process by going through and showing how to renew the uh, CA certificate for a subordinate CA. Um, as I mentioned in that previous video, um, the reason for coming up with these videos was uh, originally I've been working on a few articles on operating a Windows PKI and the current ones I've been working on are about uh, certificate, uh, CA certificate life cycles and um, knowing how and when to renew those um, as well as the current blog I'm talking about, working on that talks about how to um, you know change some different settings when you renew those CA certificates like key length and key size and things like that so um, so these videos are going to be attached to the second blog that we post in soon and they're also going to be available on YouTube so that this again the purpose of this video is just to cover the steps that are necessary to renew a subordinate CA certificate again in my environment here we have a two-tier PKI hierarchy so I have a root CA uh, and I have a subordinate issuing CA. So we're going to go through what those steps would look like in a two-tier environment. So here's my subordinate issuing CA. So I'm going to want to renew the CA certificate on the CA. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and bring up is the uh, Certification Authority Console. Okay, if we go ahead and take a look here, um, first thing we want to see is you know kind of what is the state of this machine has the CA certificate been renewed or not kind of where we're at right now so to do that I'm just open up the properties for the CA and we see that there's just uh, certificate number zero which means this CA um, certificate has not been not ever been renewed next thing we're going to go ahead and look at is the actual CA certificate properties and look at the uh, CA version and it's 0.0, .0 again showing that the CA certificate has not been renewed. Um, some additional things to go ahead and think about when you do this renewal, so it's a little bit different than the root CA. Um, when you renew this, if you renew the CA certificate um, with a with a, either a same or new key pair, you're going to get a new certificate. So you're going to want to have that posted to your AIA locations. Depending on how your environment is configured, that may kind of happen automatically for you. That may be a manual process. So if you have web servers hosting the AIA location, so if I go here and take a look at my uh, AIA location here, um, we'll see that I have a website and I have a Active Directory that's hosting my AIA location. Um, for me, the website happens to be on the CA itself in a certain role directory, so for me there's not going to be any kind of manual placing the C resulting CA certificate in that repository. But if you, you can imagine if your um, web uh, repositories that are hosting the AIA locations are not on the CAs, if you don't have some kind of manual, um, some sort of automated copy job that's going to copy CA certs up to that, then you're going to have to kind of manually place those certs after renewal. The other thing to go ahead and think about is as far as uh, if you renew with a uh, new key pair, um, you're also going to get a new curl file. And so that new curl file is going to be posted. Normally with the issuing CA, um, all that sort of stuff is automated even if you're hosting your CDP locations on a separate web server because the CA continually updates curls over time. Usually that's all automated so there shouldn't be any kind of work involved in doing that. And then if we look at in my environment, I have a CDP location that's hosted locally on the CA which is not recommended. And I also have a LDAP location hosting the uh, CDP. And so we can actually go ahead and take a look at those locations. So if I were to open um, PKI view, so PKI view again is usually a tool used to kind of make sure that all your AIA and CDP locations are available. However, it has a nice little feature that gives you kind of a view into the AD containers. So what I can do is I can right click and do manage AD containers. And so where, what, where would I expect the resulting issuing CA certificate to be posted once I do the renewal? Well, there's a couple different places. Um, we definitely expect to see it in the enrollment services container. So the enrollment services container is um, used, uh, used during the enrollment process to identify which CAs have a certain list of templates. 
Um, we'd also expect to see it listed in the AIA container as well. So those are some of the places we would look for it after renewal. And, and the krill, if we do generate a new krill file because we're doing a new key pair, then we would expect that to show up in the CDP container here. So I'm going to go ahead and do my renewal. So I'm going to bring up the Certification Authority Console. I'm going to right click and do All Tasks, Renew CA Certificate. It's going to prompt me to stop the CA service. And again here I'm going to get presented with, a, with an option. So either um, I can renew with a new key pair which would be answering yes or I can renew with the same key, same key pair answering no. Um, if you go back to the blog articles on Potion, they'll talk about different situations where you would want to, you know, renew with the same key pair or renew with a new key pair. So I would kind of use that guidance as well as any sort of intuition. So obviously if your CA has been compromised, you'd want to renew with a new key pair and things like that. So the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to renew with a new key pair. So I'm just going to leave Yes selected and click OK. And so this is kind of a counterintuitive step. If my CA was, my root CA was online, connected to Active Directory and all that sort of stuff, I could go ahead and post that request directly to the uh, root CA. Um, but it's not, so I'm basically going to hit cancel here. And when I hit cancel, it's going to generate a request file that I'm later going to have to submit to the root CA. So it's going to go ahead and um, post it to this location. So you see for me, it's going to go ahead and post it in the C drive here with the following name. Um, let me just kind of show you where that's um, set up. If you go into HK Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, and then go into Services, and then Cert Service, and then under Configuration, and then you'll see your CA name. Expand that so you can uh, see that a little bit better. There's my CA name right there. Um, so there is a location where this is configured where your request files get uh, saved to and so it's this request file name so this kind of gives the structure of the request file name and where it's going to be saved so if, you, if you've changed this and you've gone through the renewal and you can't find your request you can go here in the registry and figure out where it should be located so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here And so when I hit cancel here, it's going to go ahead and generate a request file that's going to be saved to the C drive. The next step I'm going to have to do is go through and take that uh, request file and submit it to the root CA. So I'm looking here in my C drive here. I see I have a request file. Actually, I have two. I have one for when I originally created the certificate uh, CA, and I now have one for the renewal. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And uh, for now, I'm going to copy that um, to my DC um, just to uh, to the desktop of the administrator. Uh, that was not the desktop. We'll try again. Desktop. Okay, so we saved it to the desktop uh, for the administrator account. So I'm going to go here on my DC and uh, I do not have it here, so let me just go ahead and um, must have saved it to the wrong account there, so let me just go to here, um, desktop, and we'll paste that request there. And weirdly enough, we don't see it show up because I am not in the right location. So anyways, uh, let's go back here. CDC C01, Users, Administrator, here we go. Looks like we're in the right spot now, finally. And uh, so we saved it over here to my desktop on this domain controller. Um, the issue here for me is I actually, my root CA is actually connected to a network, which from a best practice standpoint it shouldn't be. This is a small lab environment and to facilitate making the demo kind of uh, shorter than it would otherwise be, everything's kind of connected to a network. So I'm just going to go ahead and from my root CA, go ahead and copy that uh, that request file over. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy that um, and just save it here locally on the uh, root CA. So in the root CA, I just simply need to bring up the Certification Authority Console. 
I'm going to go ahead and right click here, all tasks, submit new request. I'm going to go ahead and find my request. Um, just want to make sure I grab the right one here, so let's get a little bit more information about my request. So it's the one I submitted today, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. That's now going to be a pending request, or it will be uh, here shortly. So once it's in pending request, um, I can take a, a I can can take a look at it. So I can do export binary data, um, binary request, and click OK, and then kind of view what are the contents of the request. Um, this will give you some basic information. It's not going to be all that helpful because the issuing CA certificate, most of the um, fields that are going to be filled out in the certificate are things that are configured on the root CA. Again, if you go through some of those blog articles, uh, that will talk about that. But most of the configuration is going to come from the root CA. So the lifetime of the CA certificate, what hashing algorithms you use, those sorts of things are going to come from the root CA. So you, you're not going to see them in here. But you can go through and do a quick inspection, make sure everything looks looks okay. Once I'm happy with that, I can do all tasks, I can do uh, issue. So when I go ahead and issue, the CA is going to go ahead and generate a certificate and go ahead and sign that certificate with its private key. So once that's done, we should see it in issued certificates here. So we're going to go ahead and take a look, go ahead and open that certificate up, take a look at it, see what has actually been configured in the certificate. I'd recommend that you go through and do this before you actually go ahead and install it on the issuing CA just to make sure everything looks right. So some basic things I'm looking at is um, I'm going to go through and look at, okay, is it the hash signature algorithm that I wanted, SHA-1 RSA, yeah, that looks good. Is it 10 years like I wanted to be? Yeah, it is. Is it a 2K RSA key, which is what I wanted? Yeah, that's good. And just also you want to take a look at your um, authority information access locations, make sure they look okay. Look at your CRL distribution points, make sure that that they look okay. So, I mean, if I go ahead and look, everything looks okay there, so I'm pretty happy with what's going on as far as my AIA and CDP locations and the rest of the configuration of the certificate. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it to a file. Uh, it really doesn't matter which type you choose here, and I'm just going to save that. Uh, I'm actually going to save that directly to the DC just to kind of speed this process up. So I'm just going to call it new CA cert. Okay, so that should be on the desktop of my DC now. I'm going to go back over to my issuing CA. I'm going to copy that new CA sir over locally. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save that to my desktop for now. Okay, so now I just need to go to my uh, issuing CA, um, right click, all tasks, install CA certificate. It's going to ask me to stop uh, certificate services. I'm just going to go ahead and select my new CA cert, which is on the desktop. Um, it is uh, not in a P7B format, it's in a CRA format, so I'm going to actually something went awry there. So we're going to go ahead and just wait for certificate services to start and kind of redo that operation. So we're just going to go ahead, right click again, all tasks, um, install CA certificate. Yes, yeah, stop the service. Um, we're just going to change the drop down to CER, grab my new, ACE, new CA cert, click open. And then so it's going to go ahead and install that CA cert, bind it to the private key in the certificate store, um, and then make it available for the use of the CA. So all new certificates that I issue um, from the CA will be signed by the new cert, especially since I did do a new, um, did renew it with a new key pair, it's going to be signed with that new RSA key pair, so just something to kind of keep in mind there. And so now I go ahead and I have it. I have it installed now. So I see my two certificates. I have certificate 0 and certificate 1, and if I look at certificate 1 um, and kind of look at the versioning information, we see it's version 1.1. .1. Uh, we can go to Active Directory. Uh, and we can kind of look at the manage AD containers. And we can see in my like NT offs, I have both of the issuing CA certificates 
um, and kind of go through these containers and they should automatically be in AD. Um, like I said, if you have an AIA location that's not on the CA or, or, or that you don't have an automated copy job to um, copy those two, then you may have to go ahead and um, manually copy those. So we have uh, both the issuing CA certificates here, so everything's looking good. So we're just going to click OK. And um, that completes the process for renewing an uh, issuing CA certificate. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you get a chance, go ahead and take a look at the blogs. My blog, once again, is located at http colon slash slash blogs dot technet dot com slash b slash x dot five oh nine. All right, thank you for watching.